We also have the OPC Controls data component demonstrated under the forms Form Read Values and Write Values. This is a way to subscribe to a service to receive events anytime values change. The code is very simple. Here in the example application, if we click Add Tags, we then subscribe to three tags on the local service to then get updates anytime those tags change. We can also click on any of the other buttons of adding ramp to, random to, or add assigned to, and we're then subscribing to now all of those tags. We can re remove tags as well from the subscription so that we're no longer interested in those particular tags as they update. You can see that we do have the data queuing effect that's built into all the product features of OPCSystems.net that we're receiving every single value. Even if you're communicating across the internet, you can maintain 100 nanosecond resolution. Let's take a look at the code of that example application on how to read values and how to use the data component itself. First, the easiest place to start is to look at the example code under the program group OPCSystems.net. If you click on the link example code, it should start Visual Studio for you and open up the example application. To see the example code, select View Solution Explorer and double click on the form called Form Read Values. This brings up the form design view of that Read Values form we were just using. If we double click on the Add Tags button, this takes us to the code section where we're actually subscribing to tags we're interested in monitoring. If you're interested more on a walkthrough example of the OPC Controls data component, refer to the data sources video under the topic of the data component. Here it's just as simple to set an array of tags that you are interested in and then just call the add tags method on the data component itself. And then you will get an event. And the event is basically values changed all. And it returns any time the tags change, it'll give you an array of tags that have changed, values, qualities, and timestamps of those tags. Here in the VB.net example, we're showing a, a method of using a queue to put these values onto the queue to then be processed later. They are processed under the timer right here. There's the queue and if the count is less than one we're just, ex we're just exiting. Otherwise we'll assign that queue the entire contents to a local array and then we'll parse through that array and use the values and just simply post them to that text box. To write to opcsystems.net tags or OPC items, we would use the form as an example called form write values. So back to the solution explorer. If we look if we double click on the form called form write values and then double click on the turn pump on, you can see we have one method called write tag. If you want to write multiple values, you would call write tags, pass an array of tags you want to write to, and then the values that you are interested to write. That's as simple as it is for writing tags from the data component. So now you have full read and write programmatic access to the service as well through the OPC controls data component. Also in the training guide is a walkthrough step by step on how to use the OPC controls data component. That's found under the program group opcsystems.net and then help. Here in the training guide, you'll find all kinds of information on how to set up opcsystems.net tags, alarming, data logging, all other product features as well. If you're interested in securing your application, we can use the built-in security of opcsystems.net. If we open up the configure application, this is the easiest way to see how to set up security. 
If we go to Configure OPC Systems and select Configure Security and select the local service. Here we can see we have the default security group which has in all features enabled. What we want to do is define a new group called allow or you can call it any group name you would like and we'll select add. So we are now adding a new security group with all features enabled. Then we will add a user. Let's go to configure users. Select the local service. Use any username and password combination that you would like. And select the security group allow and add that to the system. Then let's go back to the security tab and change the default security group to uncheck the features of enable all features and let's go to the read tags selection. What we can do here is disable all tags from reading while the default group is selected and possibly add optionally let's add the uh, pump dot value signal as one that is allowed except we're disabling all other tags from being read. We'll move over to the write tags tab. We'll disable all tags from writing as well here and now click apply changes. Now back to our example application when we run this example we see that we will get data from that remote service because it doesn't have ser uh, security enabled on it. We are able to read the pump signal but when we click on it we're not actually able to change the state and we don't see the current value of that other signal because all other tags are being disabled from reading. Now let's implement security in the OP in our OPC controls.net application. To do that you have a couple choices. You can programmatically call to log on and log off as demonstrated in the vb.net example as well with the OPC controls log on control. There are methods in this control that you can just call to log in. Or we can call another method to show a dialog that's built into the OPC controls product. Let's add a standard button Let's change the text of that button to log on. And now when we double click on it, we're going to call a method on the OPC controls login one control of show user login. Let's go back to the design view. Let's add another button. And we'll call this button log off. Double click on that button. there we'll call the log off. Also on the OPC controls login there are other methods that you can use to return what users currently logged in, programmatically log in as we talked about earlier, so now let's run this application again so we can see we can't change the state of the pump so we'll call the login enter in our username and password that we defined click OK now we see the current value and we are able to change the pump if we log back off you can see the data is then hidden from us and we can't change the state of the pump anymore
That is how to implement security in an OPC controls application. You can see that it is server based security so in one central location you are defining all security privileges for all users and so in the application you simply need to define a login method for that client application. Each application maintains its own security privileges as to what user is logged in. In addition to other features of security is the ability to restrict configuration properties. That's all demonstrated in the training guide and also in the vb.net example.